what's the state of play today on fortified foods and how can we as a development community really scale up in practice? What, what's your sense of where this needs to go next? Well, I think it, you know, the state of play varies by which fortificant you're talking about and which region of the world you're talking about. You know, there's some critical things that we're learning about. One is the importance of governments getting their regulatory frameworks, um, uh, uh, you know, correct and, and robust and, and enforcing them. I just came from a learning session on iron uh, uh, fortification programs, and one of the key points made there is that when they look at different countries where they've been pursuing iron fortification of flour and other, other uh, uh, foods, um, you know, having a clear and mandatory regulatory framework is, that's then enforced by the, the national authorities is actually quite important. And that's important because that's what it takes to really get industry engaged. You know, the industry is happy to participate, often excited to participate, but needs to have a level playing field. So, you know, because it costs something to add fortification to foods, um, and companies are, are willing to do that, but if they're uh, doing that and other companies aren't and selling uh, their products of poor quality, uh, you know, in an unregulated environment, it's hard for them to make a good business out of, of following the regulations for food fortification. So having a strong regulatory framework, having um, the industry participate, because, and that often means the national millers and producers, um, who are the, 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 you know, the companies that are actually producing the fortified food, um, and to then have strong partnerships with industry both nationally as well as some of the global companies producing fortificants and premixes and things like that. And then really thinking about how you can get the, the broader development community to see this as an important health intervention whose time has come to go to scale. And, and in terms of opportunity as well, I mean, do you feel that the right partnerships are in place to really deliver on a future fortified? Or is there more need for, for innovation for R&D, for example, and perhaps for new sources of finance as well? Um, there's always a role for more innovation. I mean, we know we have some very good examples of very effective partnerships. Those partnerships, you know, like the one in West Africa on, on fortification of, with vitamin A, which now has 14 countries in West Africa, working with an industry association that has been voluntarily um, uh, yeah, uh, fortifying uh, cooking oil with vitamin A for over a decade now. Those kinds of public-private partnership models are very important to replicate and to scale. We also need m more innovation. Um, you know, we also, you know, there's, we know how to uh, provide fortification of flour and cooking oils and, and, uh, and other uh, condiments and, and staple foods, but there's always a room for innovation. If we could come up with a simple multi-fortificant formulation uh, that would lower the cost, or for instance in the case of iron, deal with some of the challenges of discoloration or changes in taste, so th there's always room for product improvement as there is in, in drugs and vaccines and diagnostics, et cetera. So innovation is going to be part of, of driving our success over the next 15 years, but a good place to start is with scaling what we already have.